If you're new to photography or have been doing it for years like I have, this is in my opinion the best way to edit photos and it is super quick and does not require you to edit each and every photo individually. This is going to be a tutorial to help you batch edit your photos and make your life a lot easier and get your artwork out into the world quicker. The funny thing to me is that editing photos is really not that complicated at all. Once you learn the basics, everything else is really quick and easy. But firstly, even if you're a veteran, just make sure that you're shooting in raw format. This format shoots in a very flat image that gets you the most dynamic range or the most color range and exposure possible. So that way you have all this information that is designed to be edited and exported into a JPEG, PNG, or whatever file format you prefer. Today I'm going to be using Affinity Photo as an example, but every photography program I swear is the same. And this in my opinion is the best because it's a one-time payment and it's very cheap. Not sponsored at all by them, but this is just what I personally like using. But you can use this to apply it to any other photo editing software you're used to using. When you open up a raw photo in Affinity Photo, it is going to open up with this menu that has a bunch of different options for editing, but this isn't the place we want to be focused on yet. I personally don't do anything here unless something is underexposed. But for me, I skipped this entire step because for batch editing, uh, this doesn't quite work if you're batch editing, so you'll see in the future why this makes sense later. So I'm gonna go ahead and click develop, and this will reopen it. Um, and now that I have everything properly exposed, I can edit this photo and tweak it to my liking. So over to the right of the photo, you will see you have a layers panel, and this is where you can add all of the effects to edit the photo. And if you're looking to batch edit photos, I would recommend turning on macros. If you don't know how to use macros, it is very simple. Uh, when this is enabled, you're able to record the edits you do to one photo and apply them to many photos. So you can see how quickly this is just editing one photo and then applying that same filter essentially to all of the photos photos you have taken. This doesn't always work with every single photo. If there are drastic changes in lighting or temperature or whatever it may be in your photos, then you will have to batch edit another set of photos. But again, this is very simple. And so if you're doing wedding photography and you're shooting all day, uh, your lighting does change and going indoors as well changes the exposure and the temperature and everything. So you may have to make adjustments. But as you can see, this basically narrows down your editing from like a thousand photos to only having to edit maybe four, five, six, or maybe eight at most. And to turn on macros, if you don't already have it enabled, you go up to view, studio, and you'll have a drop down menu. And you can turn on macro right here and make sure that this is checked. Once that's enabled up here up top, you will see library and next to it macro. And macro is very simple, just hit the red button. This is to start recording your edits. And we'll use that later. Now to the basic fit of photo editing. I got on here to adjustments, and these are adjustment layers you can apply to your photo. There's no specific order to follow when applying these adjustment layers, but this is the way I do it. I focus on exposure and stuff first before I move on to like color and more uh, stylized things. First, I'll go over to curves. And here what you'll get is you'll get this pop-up menu. And I usually like to drag this around just to see what I'm doing for the photo. Here you'll see this random little graph that's on the screen. And this is just showing your exposure and where the most brightest and darkest parts of the image are. So from left is the shadows and to right are the highlights. And in the middle are the midtones. So by creating an S curve, which you may have already heard about before, you can get a very nice drastic dramatic look. My personal style leans into focusing on the shadows a little bit and bringing up the midtones because that's where the skin and colors and exposure lie. And I like to boost the highlights just a little bit. And this is, in my opinion, very fun. Uh, I really like this because it also affects saturation uh, while you're doing this. So just doing a curve and an S curve here on the graph is super easy. Just the three points, the shadows, the mids, and the highlights can get you your, a really good look right away. So we'll close that out. And the next adjustment that I'm going to do is brightness and contrast. Brightness, sometimes uh, I like affecting the overall photo to make it a little bit more bright. You'll see a lot of photographers maybe going very intense with their bright levels, uh, but I usually kind of like to keep them a little bit lower and the contrast, maybe pump it up just a little bit. This just creates a higher difference and contrast between the colors, makes things seem a little moodier. If you took away a contra contrast, it looks a little less sharp and a little bit more faded looking. Uh, but that up to your liking. I like it just to increase it just a little bit so I can get more. Close that out and the next adjustment layer that I will do is uh, shadows and highlights. Uh, sometimes it depends on the photo. I usually like to um, balance out the highlights a little bit more. Uh, just kind of tweak it by eyeballing it. There's really no specific method and it just depends what 
looks good to you. Just be sure if you push things too far, it's gonna ruin the photo and make it look weird. Um, but sometimes that does work. So uh, art is subjective and there are no objective rules. There are, but we break them all the time. And so whatever your clients like or whatever you like is the right answer. Next, I'm gonna to go to Vibrance. This is where you can find uh, saturation and vibrance here in the same panel. Uh, saturation's pretty extreme. It just increases the overall saturation or um, vibrancy of colors. Um, so if I push them very far, you can tell the image gets really orange and you don't want that. Uh, so sometimes it depends on the photo, but I will increase the saturation just a little bit, and, but mostly here I'm focused on is vibrance. Vibrance is different than saturation. Vibrance is similar to saturation, but it pushes colors without um, going super extreme. Uh, so it makes the saturation a little bit more intense, but without pushing the saturation like saturation does, if that makes sense. I'll close that up. And next I will be focusing more on colors. As you can tell, I'm getting more into colors. And I'm gonna go over to white balance. Um, here, white balance, you can be, have this set in camera, uh, but sometimes I like to mess around with it in post. It just goes from blue to yellow to green to magenta. Uh, so you can push these colors a little bit if something is a little off on your white balance in camera, you can fix it here. Or if you're going for a stylized look, make things look warmer, you can do it this way as well. For instance, this is pretty yellow and I don't want it to look too yellow. I like that look, but I still want it to look a little bit more professional and a little less like she looks like an Oompa Loompa. And sometimes I'll just play around and just see if maybe there is a tone of color that I like. I like pushing a little bit more magenta. I think that looks pretty nice and it's pretty flattering and it doesn't go one drop direction of a color too hard. You can also fix color by going to color balance. And here you can have a little bit more fine tunement of colors. Uh, you can go more, uh, you can change the reds to blue, uh, magentas to green, yellows to blue, or whichever way you decide. For me, I think I might push the reds a little bit lower to blue, so it's not too red, and push it more to magenta, and uh, just doing very, very minute tweaks. Uh, sometimes I go extreme just to see what is actually happening. Um, this is what I do all the time while I'm editing, just to see what it's affecting and if I like it one way or the other. And I think uh, looking at uh, her husband's suit coat, I can tell I don't really like the color shift that much and I like his suit coat to be kind of warm, uh, as was the sunset, that color, and just tweak it a little bit. And the last thing that you could do if you wanna stylize it even more is go to split toning down below here. Uh, with this menu, I really like this because uh, it's the same thing for color grading, video footage to make it look cinematic. Uh, same thing applies to photos. Uh, a great example is the Transformers movies. They have orange highlights and blue shadows. So if you wanna get that kind of look, you can go that way. So if you wanna get a cinematic look, you can get it this way or play around with it for a very stylized look. So you could even have redder shadows just like so. And uh, I think it looks pretty nice. It kind of gives a sort of film look look. So if you wanted to go extreme, you could. Uh, I usually go pretty subtle. For me, I don't always use split toning because it is a pretty extreme way to stylize photos. And I usually like to give my clients a pretty clean image that is free from too much style, especially because there's a lot of styles that are trendy. And if you do them now, they might not look so great in 10 years from now. But for an example, I will probably push the shadows to a more like teal blue color and uh, maybe the highlights I will make a little bit orange. And here you can bring up these uh, dials to adjust the saturation. Um, so you can have them lean more heavy into orange or you can have it lean more heavy into the shadows, which is blue. Uh, you can kind of see how it affects everything. Uh, but I kind of keep these pretty low because down below the last bar is balance. So here you can balance out the two saturation hues uh, by making the shadows stand out more or the highlights standing out more. Um, but sometimes I just like keeping a nice little balance. And after some time you get used to this and you can go back to the individual adjustment layers over here and adjust them to your liking. I think editing is all about just pushing the photo in the right direction and not going too heavy on the edits, but I don't like to push it too far. I just like to make it pop and look nice and clean. And now that we're done, we can go up to the macros and press the stop button up here to stop recording our adjustment layers. So now here you can export just this individual photo by going to file and export 
and save it as a file and where you want to on your computer as usual. Um, but we want to batch edit photos. So now that we have this macro uh, stopped, we're going to go over here to the add to library button here and you can name this macro whatever you want. This is basically just turning it into a filter onto the program so you can apply it later when you're batch editing. So for this macro, I'm going to name it wedding edit and save that. And now to batch edit these photos, I would go to file new batch job and here I will tick off parallel processing. To me, that causes a lot of issues. You don't need to know about it. Uh, but if you're experiencing issues, uh, try taking off parallel processing here. And from here, we can click add, and this will take us to our folders that we can add all the photos we want to edit at once. So here I have a bunch of examples from a wedding that I shot, and a lot of them vary in different exposures and locations. Uh, but for now, I'm going to take the photos that were all in relatively the same time and location and lighting, such as this group right here, and I'm going to open them. And that way, because I I edited the photo for the specific lighting and exposure, I can apply this LUT essentially to all of the photos in that same exact location and it makes it super easy. So now over here to the right, I can check save in two and this will let me select where I wanna save the photos. I will just name this edits select it and select folder. And down below, you can save it as an infinity photo file. If you'd like, I check that off because I don't need the raw files. More likely, you're gonna to wanna to save it as a JPEG, but you can save it as any other file format and you can even check all of these if you want all of these selected as files. Down here, I have available macros. I have a lot of uh, LUTs and filters that I've made, but here down below, I will have wedding edit. That is the one I just made and I can hit, I can check it and click apply. And now this is an applied macro. Make sure you have that in there because I have exported a bunch of photos where I did not apply a macro by accident. And now you can press okay and Affinity Photo will be batch editing all of these photos, which is 21 and specifically. And you can see it goes down the list and it applies the macros and it will tell you when it's checked and saved. And now that Affinity Photo did its job in a couple minutes, I can open up my folders and right here in the folder that I would selected for the edits to go, they have all been exported into JPEGs, super easy and super quick. And you can see all of these photos are the same with the same applied uh, macros. And you can tell where some of the photos might differ uh, depending if the lighting just shifts just a little bit, you can tell that there is a huge difference in the macros. Uh, just be aware of that and that's why I don't push photos too hard sometimes just to make sure that this doesn't happen. But there you have it. That that's how to edit like a pro in Affinity Photo or any other editing software that you're using for your photos. And I hope that this has helped you to be able to edit your photos a lot quicker and in a lot more simplistic method. I know I've used to edit photos one by one and I didn't realize that there was a way to batch photos, uh, especially in a program that doesn't cost an arm and a leg. <laughs> Let me know down below in the comments if you guys have any suggestions or recommendations for how you edit your own photos and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.